All right then gang, so in this series, you're gonna learn how to make a blog application from scratch using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. And that blog is gonna look something like this right here. Now to teach you how to do this, I brought in Raddy Dev, who is another great web dev creator here on YouTube. He's got loads of really good tutorials on his channel, so definitely check them out and subscribe. I'm gonna leave the link to his channel down below the video. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over now to Raddy to teach you how to make this application. First of all, I would like to thank the NetNinja team for giving me the opportunity to be here. My name is Radhi and today we will build a basic blog using Node.js, Express, EJS and MongoDB. We'll build everything from scratch including the CSS and the front-end interaction starting from the homepage where we'll display blog posts with pagination, we'll build the search and then we'll move on to the admin page where we'll be able to register and log in, which will lead us to the admin dashboard where we can display blog posts, add new blog posts, edit them and delete them. If this is something that you're interested in learning, stick around, subscribe to the NetNinja channel and now let's get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. I've already created a brand new project folder called Node.js-Blog and inside here is where I'm going to be creating a new project. In order to do that, we need to open this folder inside the command line terminal or PowerShell. So on Windows, there is a shortcut which you can do left shift, right click and open in terminal. As you can see, this opens the terminal inside this project folder that I've created, which is located under my desktop. If you're using Linux or Mac, you can use the CD command to navigate through the folders and then select the one that we're working in right now. Now, the first thing we can do is to check whether we have Node.js installed by doing node-v. If you get a version like me, then that means that you have Node.js installed. And if you don't, then you might have to pause the video, go to the official Node.js website, download Node.js and install it. The installation process is fairly simple. If you have Node.js, let's continue. I'm going to clear the console. And now the first thing that we need to do is to initialize a new project by doing npm init and then dash y to skip all of the questions. The questions such as the name, version, description and so on. You can always change them later on if you wish to. I'm going to clear the console one more time. And as you can see, this created a file called package.json. So let's press enter. And now let's install all of the dependencies that we need for this project. And I'm going to be explaining the dependencies, how they work and why we use them as when we need them in our project. So let's start by installing all of them first of all. So npm i for install. And we can start with bcrypt, connect mongo, cookie parser, dot env ejs express express ejs loud express session json web token method override and mongoose press enter and this should take a couple of seconds and the next thing that we need to do is to install the development dependencies, which is going to be only one, and that is Nodemon. Let's clear this, and now we can do npm i for install one more time, and then Nodemon dash dash save dash dev, and press enter. Now that we've created our project, let's open this folder inside Visual Studio Code or your favorite editor. For Visual Studio Code, you can normally do code dot and this should open Visual Studio Code. And the project should be here inside the Explorer. You should see package.json and the node modules that we just created. The other way of opening the project would be to go to file, open folder, and then select the folder that you created for your project. In my case, node.js dash block. The first file that we need to create is going to be the git ignore file. So if I put dot git ignore, inside here, we can put the files and folders that we want to ignore. So the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to be creating a file called .env. In fact, we can create it now, so .env. And this file is going to contain things such as or MongoDB username, password, and string. And we might have some other secure keys. So we don't want this file to end up on GitHub. And that's why we can ignore it from here. And I also don't want to add the node underscore modules folder 
you don't need to upload this to GitHub, so we want to ignore them. So let's do that. First of all, let's put the node modules slash, and then I'm going to put the .env file as well. So now if you create a GitHub project and you upload this to GitHub, those two files will be ignored. Let's close this. And now let's open package.json and let's focus on this file for a second. To start with, we have our project name, version and description, which you can change if you wish to. And then we have the scripts. So this is an important part which we'll have to modify. After the test script here, I'm going to create two more scripts. Let's start with the first one. So put comma and the first one is going to be the start script. And then we put column in double quote. We can do app.js. Now, the reason I'm adding a start script and app.js is because app.js is going to be our main file that is going to create the server, the express server, which we can actually run on a hosting platform. So if you wish to publish this project, this is going to be the script that you're going to be using. You're going to tell the server to use the start script and the start script is going to be app.js. In some cases, in some cases, you might have to rename your script into index.js or server.js, but you have to look into the documentation. The next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this by doing all shift down and then I'm going to put a comma and change this to development dev for short. And the reason I'm doing this development script is because when we are developing locally, I want to make sure that our application is run with Nodemon. And then we run the main app app.js, which we're going to create shortly. And the reason I'm adding Nodemon is because every time we make a change, Nodemon is going to restart the server for us so we don't have to do it manually. And now let's focus on the dependencies in here. As you can see, every single dependency inside here has a different version. Now, in future, those versions will most likely change. Now, I will always suggest that you use the latest dependencies, but of course that could cause some problems. All you need to do is read the error, Google it, and you'll most likely find the problem. And now the last one in here, Nodemon, the development dependencies. This is only used for development and we're already using it inside here, which is great. So let's save this. Let's close the package.json file. Let's go to the Explorer and let's create the app.js file, app.js. So inside here is where we're going to be creating our express server, which we can then visit through the browser. So what we're going to do, first of all, is require this .env file as we will need it later on in the project. To require the .env file, we do require under single quotes .env and then config like so, and we are done. Now we should be able to use the .env in our application. Now let's create a very basic express server, but then const express equals, and then we require express. Now that we've required express, we can use this in order to create an express application. And in order to do this, we can do const app equals, and then we can do express like so. And this function, if we hover over it, you will see that this creates an express application. The express application also needs to have a port. You can const port equals 5000 as default. But if you wish to publish this project online to a server, then you might have to use their default port number. And in order to use it, we can do process.env and then port. Perfect. The next thing that we can do is to set up a very basic route just so we can test the application. And to do this, we can do app.get. So this is a get route when you go in the browser and visit this route here, which is nothing. This is the home page. For example, you could have about page and so on. But since this is the home page, I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to do request and response function. And then this is going to be an arrow function like so. And inside here, we can do response.send. And then we can just send a message such as hello world. Close it. And now if we close this, the last thing that we need to do is to tell our application to listen on this port number. So I'm going to copy this and let's do app.listen. And then we put the port number like so. And this is going to be an arrow function as well. And inside here, we can do console.log. And then in single slanted quotes, we can do app listening on port. And then we put the port number with the dollar sign and curly brackets. Since this is a single slanted quote, we can do template literals, which means that we can bring const variables, lets, 
and so on. So I'm going to put the port const from here and we should be good to go. Technically speaking, now you should be able to run this application and there are two ways of doing it. You can either do it through the Visual Studio code. I've zoomed in quite a lot, but if you click on the three dots, you should have the terminal here. You can start a new terminal or we can use the PowerShell here that I've already opened. As long as you are inside the project folder, like I am, then now we can clear this first of all, and now we can do npm run and we can run the development script, which runs nodemon and then app.js. Press enter. And if you get nodemon starting node app.js, app listening on port for 5000, we should be good to go. Let's visit this inside the browser. If you go to localhost or port 5000 and you should get hello world just like I have, which means that our express server is working. Now is a good time to start looking at our layout. So if we go back to the app.js, inside here, we can include the express EJS layout. So under the express here, we can do const and then we can do express layout equals choir. And then inside here, we require express ejs layout like so and in order to be able to use the express ejs layout we can do this here as a middleware we can do put a little comment templating engine and then app.use express layout close this and then we can set a default layout for application so app.set layout and the default layout i'm going to put under a folder called layout and then main. This is going to be the main layout that we're going to create in a second. And the last thing that we need to do is to set the view engine. So app.set. And in this case, view, the view engine is going to be set to EJS like so. And we should be good to go. Now we actually also want to set a public folder before we start building our layout. And the reason for this is our public folder is going to be holding stuff like JavaScript, CSS, images, and so on. So in order to make this easy for us, we can create it inside here. We can do app.use and then express.static and then the express.static folder is going to be called public. So let me show you what I mean. This is going to be a folder called public. So if I go to the Explorer, let's create a new folder called public. And inside this folder is where we're going to have our CSS, we're going to have our images, and we are going to have our JavaScript. We'll create the files in a second. But this is how this is working. And I'll show you why we're doing it like this. It's going to be a lot easier to access through our EJS pages if we do this. And now let's look into creating our layout. Save this. Now, first of all, I don't want all of my routes to be inside the app.js. You can't do this, but it's going to get very messy. So I'm going to create a new folder called server. And inside this folder, we're going to have another folder called route. So we're going to have multiple routes and I'm going to split them into two. So first of all, we're going to have main route for our main website route, like the home page, about page, contact page. And then we're going to have admin route for the administrator. So let's create a new file inside route. And this one is going to be called main.js. So essentially, I want to move this inside this main.js file. But before we do that, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to do app.use. And then inside here, I'm going to do slash as a home page. And then we're going to do require. And we want to require that file. So dot server, oops, slash and then route and then slash. We require the main file which we just created. Perfect. If we do this, and now I can go to that main.js, but inside here we also need to require express one more time. So const express equals require express like so and the reason we are requiring express is because we need to get the router from express in order to be able to do this so const router equals and then we do express dot router like so 
open close and we're good to go and inside here we can add or route in this case instead of app we need to change to router and now this should also work just like it did before but before we do anything else we actually need to export this router otherwise our application won't work so what we can do is inside here we can do module dot exports and then equals router that's it save this save the application go to the terminal have a look if you're getting any errors and if you're getting up listening on port 5000 we should be at the same spot where we were before it's just a little bit more organized